Good day grade 8 and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. You are tuned into your first grade 8 EMS financial literacy lesson for term 2. I am Florence Vermeulen and this is my Tuma Mina Teaching. In this lesson we'll be looking at the accounting cycle. So are you ready? So grab your notebook or even better, your EMS book and let's get down, let's get down to business. Are you ready? What is the accounting cycle? The accounting cycle indicates the route a business transaction follows from the moment the transaction takes place to when all the transactions are recorded to show the financial position of the business. Let's look at the different steps of the accounting cycle. Step 1. The transaction takes place. Step 2. The transaction is recorded on a source document. Step 3. These documents are recorded in the cash journals, namely the cash received journal and the cash payment journals, for short CRJ or CPJ. Step 4. The journal should then be closed off and be posted in the general ledger. Step 5. It should then be posted into the trial balance. And step six, the last step, this is where the financial statements has got two components, the income statements and the balance statements should then be drawn up. Let's look at these steps a bit closer. Firstly, the transactions take place. As you already seen, a transaction takes place every time money exchanges hands between a business and a, another party. Transactions are done daily. It is a record of any transaction that took place within a business. Let's just recap a bit. A cash transaction is an event between people doing business in which cash is exchanged or transferred for an item or service of value. So let's look at ways on how we can make cash payments. You can use coins or notes, your credit cards or your debit cards, or you can make electronic funds transfer, well known for EFT. So the second step of the accounting cycle is to record the transaction on a source document. Every transaction should be recorded on a source document and this could be a receipt, a cash register tape or even a deposit slip depending on the transaction. The bookkeeper uses source documents to record the transactions in the books of the business. Source documents are updated daily. So let's have a quick recap on the different documents. So we have an original receipt issued when cash is received for goods and services. And then, remember what I said, we can also use electronic funds transfers, or for short, EFT. This is issued when an electronic cash payment is made for goods or services. And then, a cash register slip is issued by cashiers for cash sales. And then, another document. A deposit slip is issued when people deposit cash into the bank account and receive a proof or verification of the deposit. Let's look at the different documents issued when businesses are making cash transactions. So now we're going to look at the source documents used to record the transactions in the books of the business. You can either use a duplicate of receipt, an EFT reference number, cash register tape or a bank statement. But what are they? Let's look into this. A duplicate receipt is to record cash received. An EFT reference is to record 
cash payments that were made electronically. And then a cash register tape is to record cash sales. And then a bank statement to record and verify electronic transfers. So, step three of the accounting cycle is where all the documents are recorded in the cash journals. In a service business, there are two types of cash transactions that take place continuously, the cash receipt and the cash payment. The cash transactions are recorded in journals, also called subsidiary journals that are used to summarize the transactions. It organizes transactions in different types of transactions to simplify the orderly transfer of information into the next step of the accounting cycle, namely the ledger. So, remember what we said. There are two types of journals, the cash receipt journal and the cash payment journal. Now, what are the differences? The cash receipt journal is to record all the cash received and the cash payment journal is to record all the cash payments. Step four in the accounting cycle is the general ledger. So what is that? The general ledger contains all the accounts of a business. An account is where all transactions of a similar nature, for example, stationary or recorded. Now grid 8. The general ledger is a collection of the accounts of a business. Each ledger account has two sides. The debit side on the left and the credit side on the right. And this is grid 8 just to simplify the recording over time. But remember, entries in the general ledger are based on the double entry principle. The double entry principle means that every transaction entered on the debit side of an account, the same transaction must be recorded on the credit side of another account. So let's move on to step 5 in the accounting cycle. The trial balance. Remember, when a general ledger has been drawn up and it balances, it is important, grade 8, to check whether the double entry principle has been correctly applied and the accounts have been drawn up accurately. So to do this, you draw up a trial balance. But firstly, what is a trial balance? A trial balance is a summary or a list of all closing balances in the ledger accounts. So, if all accounts were correctly debited or credited, remember what must you do? A double entry. And this is where the totals of the debit and the credit columns, where it should be equal. So now, grade 8, we will look at the last step within what cycle? The accounting cycle. You've got that. And that is the drawing up of financial statements. And if you recall, there are two components within the financial statements. That is the income statement and the balance sheet. So why do you draw up an income statement? Grade 8, that is basically to find the profit or the loss of the business. And a balance sheet? A balance sheet reflects the assets, owner's equity and the liabilities of a business. And also, it thus reflects the financial position or the worth of the business on a specific date. So now, grade 8, you are knowledgeable about the financial statements and its components. But remember, financial statements are drawn up in such a way that everyone understands them. But also, this is why there are no debit or credit columns and no folio numbers. So now grade 8, we looked at the accounting cycle and all its steps. So let's recap. What is the accounting cycle? The accounting cycle indicates the route 
a business transaction follows from the moment the transaction takes place to when all transactions are recorded to show the financial position of the business. Once we follow the accounting cycle, we are left with the reports of the financial statements that show how a business or organization has performed. It also provides information to required to plan for the future. One of the statements which shows the financial position of a business on a specific date is called the balance sheet or known as the statement of financial position. It shows what the business owns, which is assets, what they owe are liabilities and the difference between assets and liabilities are known as equity or owner's equity. If we have to write these three terms into an equation form, it will be assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. However, we usually work with positive amounts in accounting, so the equation known as the basic accounting equation is written as assets equals owner's equity plus liabilities. Great, eight? this marks the end of lesson one and I hope that you can now see the bigger picture of the accounting cycle and its processes. See you next time when we will be exploring the accounting equation and the cash receipt journal. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. These lessons are very costly for us to produce, but we are very determined to keep it free for everyone. We produce these lessons at the rate at which it gets funded. So here are three ways to join hands with us to keep it free for all South African learners. First off, share our resources so that more people can benefit. Secondly, you can add us on my school as a beneficiary. This will help us immensely. Thirdly, we give Section 18A certificates, so your contribution will have a tax benefit. So let's join hands and collaborate for free quality education for all South Africans. Okay.